In previous videos, we learned about vector spaces. For example, we learned that Euclidean spaces R2 and R3 are common vector spaces. We also learned that the set containing a single vector, the zero vector, where, for example, the zero vector is the two tuple of zeros, is also a vector space. Now we notice that this set, let's say it's called V0, is a subset of R2, because the only element in the set, the two tuple of zeros, is also an element of R2. I'm going to pause here and say that if you haven't heard of a subset, and if you don't know what it means for a set to contain another set, or for a set to be contained in another set, then you need to pause here again and look for a video that describes what is a subset, etc., and then come back to this video. So from now on, I'm going to assume that you know about the notations, for example, this notation, and the concept of a subset. So, the set V0 is a subset of R2, but in the meantime, V0 is itself a vector space. Therefore, V0 is a vector space contained in another vector space. This motivates us to define a concept called subspace. The official definition is if W is a subset of a vector space V with addition and scalar multiplication defined. So this is the addition and this is the scalar multiplication defined on the vector space V. And in the meantime, W is itself a vector space under the same addition and scalar multiplication defined on V. Then W is called a subspace of V. Let's break down the definition step by step. First of all, W is a subset of V, which means Every element of the set W is in the meantime also an element of the set V. Secondly, V is a vector space. It's not just any set, it's a set that is a vector space. For example, R2 is a vector space with the addition defined as component-wise addition of two tuples and scalar multiplication defined as component-wise scalar multiplication of two tuples. And thirdly, W, under the same addition and scalar multiplication, is a vector space itself. That's why a subspace W is basically a vector space contained in another vector space V, while W and V are vector spaces with the same addition and scalar multiplication. So let's try to gain some intuition by using R2 as an example. We're gonna discuss all the subspaces of R2 in this example. First of all, R2 has two trivial subspaces. One is the set containing the 0, 0 tuple, which we have named V0. The other is R2 itself. They're called trivial subspaces because they're just very obviously subspaces. We have already mentioned that V0 is a subspace of R2, and R2 is a subspace of R2 itself because R2 is considered a subset of R2, albeit a trivial subset of R2, because every set is a subset of itself. And in the meantime, R2 is certainly a vector space and with the same addition and scalar multiplication defined on R2. So it's trivially a subspace of R2. Now let's consider subspaces of R2 that are non-trivial. So suppose W is a subspace of R2. Let's think about what elements should W contain. Because W is a vector space, it should contain a zero vector, according to the definition of a vector space. The zero vector of the vector space R2 is the two tuple of zeros, and the zero vector of W should be the same, because the addition and scalar multiplication of W is the same as those of R2. If you don't believe me, you can ask yourself this question, what kind of two tuples could be the zero vector otherwise? So what kind of two tuples would satisfy this condition if U is an arbitrary two tuple? So we figured out that the two tuple of zeros should be an element of any subspace of R2. Now, if the subspace W contains only the two tuple of zeros, then W would be equal to V0, which we know is a trivial subspace of R2. So a non-trivial subspace of R2 should contain something else 
other than the zero vector. So suppose we have a non-zero two-tuple W whose components are W1, W2 that also belongs in W and it's not equal to the zero two-tuple. Then we can deduce that there must be other elements in W according to the definition of a vector space. For example, all the scalar multiples of W should be in capital W as well. That's because of properties 5 and 6 of vector spaces. So let's write that down here. For any scalar C, in this case a real scalar, this symbol means any or for all. The scalar multiple CW should also be an element of the subspace capital W. We can try to visualize this using the X or Y coordinate system. So geometrically, if you have any non-zero vector, this is vector W. As an element of the set capital W, then scalar multiples of W are vectors that are on the same line as vector W. There are many, many of them. All these vectors whose terminal points are on the same line as that of W are scalar multiples of W. So in other words, the set of all scalar multiples of W can be geometrically represented as the line that's infinitely long that passes through the origin on which W is lying. Algebraically, we can represent these lines using the set notation. For example, if we write W as the set of all vectors V that are scalar multiples of the vector 1, 2, so that C is any real number, then this set is geometrically the line that passes through the origin and the point 1, 2 and is infinitely long. This is because the vector 1, 2 is the vector whose terminal point is at this point. So any scalar multiples of this vector are, are essentially vectors on the same line with this vector. Back to what we were discussing. What kind of elements should be in W? We've decided that if W contains a non-zero vector, then all the scalar multiples of that vector has to be in W. Does there need to be any other vector in W in order to make W a vector space itself? The answer is no. In fact, we can prove that every line that passes through the origin that is infinitely long is a subspace of the two-dimensional plane R2. As you can see, there can be infinitely many of these lines. And what I have drawn here are just four examples, well, including this one, then five examples. And it's also true that every non-trivial subspace of R2 is geometrically a line that passes through the origin. To see why, that is, to verify why such lines are subspaces of R2 are and the only non-trivial subspaces of R2, we will explain in later videos. Right now, I'm just going to reiterate the take-home message of this example, which is that subspaces of R2 are the set containing only the zero two-tuple, R2 itself, and lines through the origin. In later videos, we are going to explain how to prove a subset of a vector space is a subspace.